The Consumer Electronics Show is off and running in Las Vegas. NVIDIA's Jensen Wong delivering the keynote address last night. He also spoke, spoke to our John Fort, and John joins us right now from Sin City. John, this is a big deal. What did, uh, what did Jensen have to say? Uh, yeah, a lot of big news coming out here, Becky, and it's, it's dark and early here in Vegas. I spoke with NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong after his keynote yesterday, after his talk with analysts, where they pressed him on China demand, overall demand, both of which he said remain strong. And I asked him about the rationale behind his Grok licensing deal. We actually ended up talking for about a half an hour. Early in the conversation, he addressed open models as part of NVIDIA's strategy. Listen. We're the only AI company in the world working with every AI company in the world. We run every model from open AI to this year we announced Anthropic. And I'm very excited about that. Of course, we have the benefit of working with Elon and XAI. We've always been working with, with uh, Google on Gemini. And so NVIDIA is the only company in the world that runs across every domain of science, mm -hmm. every AI company, every AI model. And the only way to do that is to do it openly. Mm -hmm. If we were to be proprietary in some way, closed in some way, then we'll have the benefit of monetizing the entire layer and the entire stack, but it prevents our ability to be open. And we, I really love that our company has the ability to work with everybody. Robotics. It's been a, a dream part of CES for a long time, but it's also been elusive. I mean, we had iRobot kind of not go in a great direction. Um, granted, we do have autonomous vehicles now, and those are really robots, robots. I guess, right? We're, we're talking about physical AI. What makes this moment different Excellent. for robotics Excellent. in particular? And maybe give me humanoid, because we, we tend to get very excited about it, but I wonder, too excited? Excellent, excellent. Timing is everything. We've been thinking about this area for a long time, waiting for that moment. And, and um, as in many of the things that we do, um, whether it's digital biology and turning drug discovery from a, from a discovery process to an engineering process, from a scientific process to a science and engineering process to self-driving cars to even the work that we do in computer graphics. Ray tracing is now completely done in real time. It took us 30 years to do it in real time. And so you have to pursue something for a long period of time looking for that moment where that enabling technology is discovered. In the case of human and robotics, let me, let me first say that a computer doesn't know and doesn't care what kind of tokens is generating. It could be generating a language token, it could be generating a video token, it could be generating a steering wheel activation token, or it could be generating a finger articulation grasp token. The computer in the final analysis is just a bunch of numbers. The moment that I saw generative video, us texting into a prompt, Two people sitting, having a conversation. The guy wearing a jacket reaches out, picks up a cup of water, and drinks it. I could describe that into a generative AI model today, and you and I both know that Chris, for example, yeah. right, with Chris runway, Noel, runway yeah. I could give him that prompt, and he will generate an amazing video. Isn't that right? Yeah. And that video has a person reaching out and picking up a cup. Why is that model different than a generative model for a human or robot picking up a cup? The moment I saw that working that well, then the rest of it is still a whole bunch of research, a whole bunch of, whole bunch of technology, but you could tell that the enabling technology is just right around the corner. Tell me how much more performant Vera Rubin is. Because I get questions, got one on Fast Money, how much does it cost? And I guess the flip side of that is, how much value does it deliver? That's exactly so right. Yeah. You got some charts on the screen yeah. behind me, you know, showing the, the difference in value between yeah. Hopper, Blackwell, Rubin. W what are some of the most compelling, you think, stats now that you've got these six yeah. chips in production and you're starting to really pump out some, uh, some it benchmarks? It comes down, it's a ton of technology and a whole bunch of software, but it comes down to three things ultimately. Okay. The first thing is this. The big picture is to think about these computers, not as supercomputers, but as AI factories. These AI factories are producing what is called tokens, numbers. 
And so you, you have to use you have to use the factory for three things, three fundamental things. The first thing is to train your next frontier model so that you could build the best AI, get to market first. So you want to train it as fast as you can. Comparing Blackwell to Ruben, Ruben is a 4x leap. And so that 4x jump, you could either do something in four months or do it in one month. So it's a very big difference. You could either do something with four times as many Blackwells or one fourth as many, save a ton of money. You could decide to get to market sooner or you could train your next generation model cheaper. You decide. And so that's training the model. It's really about the next frontier. The second thing is that you have to generate the tokens as cost effectively as possible because every single generation, the token costs are coming down. Okay. Now, when token cost comes down, you can use more of it. That's a very big deal. And so we need to get the token cost to come down. And Ruben reduces our token cost by a factor of 10 over Blackwell. How much of that is because of energy efficiency? It's energy efficiency, it's algorithms, it's chips that go faster. In the world of AI factories, going faster is the same as going cheaper. So fast, getting something done fat, more quickly, costs less to do. And the third thing that we have to do is the overall throughput of that AI factory has to increase or the revenues of the company that builds that factory doesn't increase. And so we have to make sure that every single generation we increase it tremendously. In the case of Ruben, the token throughput of an AI factory increases by a factor of 10 times. Mm. And so the value is unquestionably incredible. And the reason why we're able to do that, even though the number of transistors we used was only 1.7 times, this is where NVIDIA's ability to integrate and innovate across the CPU, GPU, the GPU, the networking, the networking, the switches, the scale up switch, the scale out switch, and the data processing engine, we literally innovated across every single chip of the data center. This, and Vera Rubin, this generation, Every single chip changed. Hmm. Six brand new chips, every one of them revolutionary. And it's by it co-designing, it's called co-design, it's basically innovation, innovating across everything at one time.